Hey guys, Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today we're going to be talking about the top five ways to deal with stubborn fungus or candida. We're going to dive into this topic today. I see patients from all over the world that come in that have chronic fungal issues and they're having a hard time dealing with it. We'll kind of look at some of the, the root cause underlying mechanisms and some natural strategies that you can do to address that. Uh, before we do, please smash that like button. Love to see your comments down below. And if you enjoy the video, just share with one friend or family member that could benefit. All right, so out of the gates, when we have chronic gut issues, right, it could be bacterial overgrowth, maybe in the camp of like SIBO or dysbiosis. It could be candida or fungal overgrowth or CFO. We could have parasites. We could have H. pylori. And again, all of these things are going to impact digestion, bloating, motility issues, constipation. Maybe we're going to have excessive gas, maybe skin issues, acne. I've seen quite frequently candida and fungal overgrowth deal with skin issues, or even you'll see vaginal yeast infections or even topical skin infections like tinea versicolor. Maybe in your scalp, like you'll see dandruff, uh, fungal toenails. All these things are, are possible things that you're going to look at and connect to in regards to candida. Now, of course, let's look at the diet strategies, right? Candida loves acellular carbs. It loves processed carbs, processed sugar, excess starch. Remember, starch does convert to carbohydrate, which does convert to sugar, right? So too much of that could be an issue. So out of the gate, I always recommend going lower carb because you want to starve some of the fuel source out. Now, as you do that, you can have a little bit of die-off. Candida is notorious for die-off due to the mycotoxins and the fungal toxins that are produced. And so when we're dealing with die-off, it's always good to maybe have some binders in there, some activated charcoal, some zeolite, some fulvic minerals, some bentonite clay, these are all good strategies to be able to absorb that debris so there's less chance of die-off coming out. So diet strategies out of the gate are going to be big. I mean, there's all kinds of studies we can pull up here. We'll put some on screen of lower carbohydrate diet actually helping to reduce fungal overgrowth. That's a, that's a thing. That's a real thing. We see that because we decrease the fuel source. That's going to help. Uh, secondly, other infections could be an issue. I've seen clinically in practice many times you'll see H. pylori infections with high levels of candida. You'll see other types of bacteria with candida. You're going to see other types of parasites with candida. It's kind of like the shark swimming. You notice like there's like these little kind of like parasite fish on the shark's belly a lot of time. That's like candida. It's like kind of hiding out below with other big things around it. And so you want to say, okay, are there other bugs, other big bugs there that are potentially an issue, right? So that's big out of the gate. And also too, when you have candida issues, it can make making diet changes really difficult because it, these chemicals that are produced by the candida can make you crave foods, make you crave sweets. And so it's good to look at that because if you're trying to make diet changes, the candida could be a big inhibitor for that out of the gates. Um, so next big thing out of the gates would be, um, so we talked about food. We talked about um, other bugs. So the H. pylori, the parasites, other types of big infections out of the gate. Herbals. Herbals can be very helpful. I mean, there's even like, so the big medications you're going to see out there are going to be like your Nystatin, uh, Amphotericin B was one that used for a bit, and then your uh, Fluconazole or Ketoconazole, right? Ketoconazole shampoo, Fluconazole systemic. These are your big medications. Now, even some of the medications that are out there, they're, you're actually still going to do better with, like this is one study looking at oil of oregano with Fluconazole and Nystatin. This is in vitro, right? But they actually saw that the oil of oregano really helped the biofilm proliferation. So with a lot of the fungus stuff, what you see is more biofilm. So this study demonstrated that oil of oregano uh, could be considered to improve antifungal activity with, against candida. So what they're saying is the medications weren't good enough, but when they added the herbal to it, it actually helped with the biofilms, right? And so that's why we love some of the biofilm busters because they can allow any of the medications we use. Or if we use synergistic herbals, I would never just use one herbal alone if we're dealing with candida. We would do synergy. That way we have the biofilms because most of these medications and herbal compounds, they work at disrupting the membrane of the candida, right? And so if we disrupt that membrane, then, then that essentially that microbe starts to die. Now, there's all kinds of other in vitro studies looking at different fatty acids. Fatty acids can be great, whether it's caprylic acid, like a C6 or C8 fatty acid, or even undiselenic acid from a castor bean oil. These are all really good fatty acids that have been shown to you know, kill multiple strains of candida. Right? So what they do is they disrupt and dis disintegrate the plasma membrane. Now, I love some of the fatty acids because they're not super antibacterial in a way. They're not going to disrupt a lot of the beneficial bacteria in the gut. So it can be a great way to add some of these things in to still get some excellent benefits with knocking down some of the candida. So these are all powerful things out of the gate. And we'll put up some other studies on screen of some other herbals that can be great. So we'll use oil of oregano. We'll use berberines. Um, we'll use undiselenic acid, caprylic acid. We will use thyme, we will use 
clove. These are all powerful. I'll even use silver, and we'll even use some biofilm busters, whether it's ginger or NAC alongside it, because the biofilms of the fungus can make some of the medications even you know, have a hard time. And there's so much fungal resistance just because fluconazole and let's say nice that and the big medications that are prescribed and a lot of times they're over prescribed are the big ones. And there's all kinds of epidemics of people that have chronic candida issues and they're resistant to these drugs. And so that's where some of the herbal blends really come in handy. So really having a good blend where you can mix and match some different things. And again, you, you got to fix the fuel source. You go to a conventional doctor, they're not going to touch your diet. They're not going to look at the beneficial bacteria because the beneficial bacteria actually have a major effect of crowding out some of the bugs. So we'll add in whether it's bacillus strains, whether it's saccharomyces, polarity strains, whether it's lactobacillus or bifidobacteria strains, these strains are going to have a powerful effect of crowding out a lot of the candida. We'll try to put some studies up on screen looking at um, some of these things. But bifidobacterium, lactobacillus, very powerful at helping to crowd out a lot of the bugs. Very helpful. And again, when it comes to diet, I recommend lower carb, like, you know, under 100 grams, under 100 to 50 net grams. And again, you can have that die off because you're starving out the bugs. And if you're not keto adapted, it can take a couple of days to a couple of weeks to really get keto adapted, depending on how much carbs and sugar are in your diet. Um, also, with testing, it may not come back. You may not come back on a conventional stool test or even one of the functional stool tests. Like we'll run like a, a good GI map stool test in that fungal section. If we see any fungus in there at all, hey, it's an issue. Like we're considering it a problem, we're focusing on that, but we may not see it. And that's where a good organic acid test can be helpful because we can run the D-arabinose, the tartaric acid, the oxy-3-glutaric. We can see the different organic acid markers that could be a sign of fungus. And also, do you have colonized mold in the gut? Sometimes we'll see, we'll pull up on the organic acid test where we see like the aspergillus, the fusarium, the penicillium species on that organic acid test that we, we like to do in the clinic that's very helpful for colonized mold. So you may be a, a mold slash candida factory. So that's important to look at that and, and to see. And again, mold and fungus are kind of under that, you know, I should say mold and candida are under the kind of the, the fungal umbrella, if you will, right? One's multicellular, one's unicellular. So it's important to look at that. One's more environmental outside of the world, right? Your environment, mold, mycotoxins, water damage, high humidity, or the other one's going to be in your gut and overgrowth there. But you can have mold issues in your gut, like I mentioned, with those big organic acid markers too. Um, next, fix your digestion, right? If you have chronic fungal overgrowth, you're pr it's probably going to impede your digestion. It's going to make it harder for you to digest and break things down. You'll be more gassy. You'll be more bloaty. Your motility will be off. Mycotoxins are notorious for throwing off motility. So you may need to work on your motility. You may need to work on some natural prokinetics. You may need to be adding in digestive enzymes and acid support. You may need to make sure that you have some motility enhancers so you're, you're regularly having bowel movements so you're not reabsorbing a lot of toxic debris. That's super important. Big test would be comprehensive stool test like the GI map or an organic acid test when we can look deeper at some of the organic acid fungal metabolites out of the gate. And again, when you're using different herbal protocols, make sure there's all the other bacteria and, and gut stressors are dealt with. I typically deal with fungal stuff last. And so most people, when they see fungus, they want to deal with it first. It tends to be a mistake. All right. So you really want to look at that. Also, when you're killing fungus, guess what? You don't actually want to be super, super low carb. We like to go into diet changes a month or so before we ever touch the gut. And so when we actually start wanting to do gut killing protocols and we're ready to do that, we're actually ramping up the carbohydrate because we want to put cheese on that mousetrap for some of these bugs to go out. We don't want these candida fungal particles to go into a cyst or spore-like state that consider it like hibernation, right? Makes it harder to go after. So that can be really important to look at. Also, do you have clinical signs and symptoms of candida on your body? Do you have dandruff in your hair? Do you have tinea versicolor or the kind of the white candida spots on your skin? Do you have chronic yeast infections, vaginal yeast infections? Do you have fungal toenails or fingernails? Do you have athlete's foot, right? Some of them may, may be more topical issues, may not be a sign of, let's say, systemic issues, but it's good to look at that. You wanna make sure you address that. Some of the outside infections may need to be dealt with more topically, while the inside ones are gonna, you're gonna have to really make the diet changes and lifestyle cha changes, and sometimes both too. So really important to look at it from both sides of the coin. So hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast. We'll put links and references down below. And if you want to reach out to myself, Dr. J, we see patients worldwide. So if you want that, we'll put the link down below. If you want that good functional medicine support, we go to lab tests as well to kind of get to the root of what's happening too. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed. Please share with one family member or friend if you enjoyed the podcast. And I'd love to see your comments below. Thanks. Bye now.